Hey everyone, in this video, I want to show you how to make this disintegration effect. So this is an upgrade to my older disintegration effect. But this time, I am also using Niagara and some extra effects in the material. So here you can see a skeletal mesh dissolving like this. And here you have a spear dissolving. But here you can see that the fire is spawning at the edges of the dissolve. And here you can see it more clearly like this on the edges. So here you can see that the flame is coming from the dissolved area. So if I just select this and if I increase the alpha, you can see flame is coming from everywhere. And if I reduce the alpha, you can see that the flame isn't really coming. When I increase it, more flames will come through the edges. And here you can also see the same thing. Here if I select this, I can increase the alpha. So I get an effect like this or like this. And here I can change the color like that. And here I can change the inner edges like this. So it will go inside the mesh. And also I can reduce this like this. So it will go over the edge. And I can also reduce the outer edge like that. So it will wrap around the entire mesh like that. So if I reduce it more. You can see that it is wrapping around the entire mesh. So here I have this texture. If I change this to a different texture and change the alpha, you can see a different type of effect. So if I just press play, you can see a different kind of effect here. And here I can also change the color like that. And I can select this texture. So now I get something like this. And if I press play, you get something like this. And here I have a similar effect playing on the skeletal mesh. So here you can see that the skeleton is dissolving and you can see particles falling down and flying everywhere. And here, if I just disable the Niagara system, you can see that the dissolved edges are kind of different from last time. There is some effects happening here also. So if I change the alpha here, you can see an effect like this. And I can also change this. See, we have a different effect. And you can control a lot of parameters with this. So this is what we are going to be creating today. And if you want to download the entire project file with all the systems I have shown here, you can support me on my Patreon. And for $5, you can download this and also download almost all my project files from my previous tutorials. And if you are already my patron, Thank you very much for supporting this channel and me. It means a lot to me. Thank you. This video is sponsored by Dash, a new 3D world creation plugin from Polygon Flow. I have been using this tool for a while now and it has made my world creation process really easy and really fast. In this plugin, there are a lot of tools that you can use to create your world really fast and really add some really fine and really big details to your world. So let me show you a few tools this plugin has to offer by creating a really cool scene on this map. So this is very basic here. So I have a plane here. I will just increase the scale like this. And here in the tool, I can type in water and set water materials. So here I have this really cool water material applied to it in an instant. And now I will add some grass to it. For that, I will click on the bridge icon. Here you can see all the assets you have downloaded from the mega scan library, or you can just download anything from here and add it here or you can just drag that into the world like this. So here I'm just going to choose this grass and here I will just control drag this in and scatter here and now you can see that it has been scattered on the world. So if I click this I can increase the maximum scale to like four or something like that. So it's really visible. So here one problem is that this grass is going into the water. So in order to prevent that, this tool offers a lot of masking controls like proximity masking, noise mask, etc. I'm just going to use the future mask. And here we can see the angle mask. If I set this to like 30 or something like that. So now you can see that there is no grass going into the water. Now we can add some trees to the world. For that, I will just bring in a tree like this. And now I will click here, add a new scatter and call this tree. Add that to the scatter like this. And for the surface, I can select the landscape and add that. So here now I can increase the height of the trees and reduce the density to like one. So now you can see all of these trees. So maybe the grass is a bit too big. So I will just go back to the grass. Maybe reduce the size to like one. 
and increase the density to like eight. So now you can see that there are a lot of grass growing. So here you can see that the trees are growing in the water. We don't really want that. So first we can do the angle mask. So I will do it by 20 for this. So now nothing is growing. But if I go inside, you can see that a tree is growing here. So we can fix that by increasing the height to like 0.5. So it is gone. You can do the same for the grass if you want. So that tree is gone. And here you can see that trees aren't really supposed to grow like this. So here you have a surface align tool. So you can align the trees to the normal or not. So it's really handy. Now I want to show you a really cool physics tool. So if I click this, I have this options here. And if I drag in a rope, if I press control and drag that in, I can do a physics drop and it will just fall down. So here. I can just duplicate that. I can get a lot of rocks like this. So you can populate the world like this and you can press control set static. So everything is static now. And now we have this. So if I click this and type in afternoon, I can add an afternoon light preset and press play. And now I can play in the world just like that. And here one more cool thing you can do is that you can type in camera and new camera. You will get this really cool cinematic look with this new camera. And here you can type in color grading and you can add a lot of color grading here or you can type in cycle. So here we have a really cool color grading now applied and we have a really cool cinematic camera. And this plugin has a lot of uh, things to offer like a, it also have a cable tool to create cables between two meshes or it can be wine or rope or something like that. Or you can create pipes. You can also draw spline directly onto the map. Does mesh convex hull, you can do procedural to static mesh operation, you can even create terrain with this. So this plugin has a lot to offer and if you want to check out the plugin, you can go to polygonflow.io and download a free trial and check it out for yourself. The link will be in the description below. So do check it out. It's a really cool tool. I couldn't show all the cool stuff in the plugin within the limited time. So just start a free trial and check it out for yourself. And they also have a lot of tutorials in their YouTube channel. So you can check that out also. The links will be in the description below. So here there are two effects. One is a static mesh one and the other one is a skeletal mesh one. We will be creating both. So first we will create our dissolve effect. So for that right click then material and M underscore dissolve or disintegrate whatever you want to call it. So I will call this M underscore dissolve main and open this up. So in order to make something disappear, we need to change the blend mode to mask. And here we will get this opacity mask input. Now, if I just get a constant of zero and connect this, you can see that it will go away. So this is what we are going to be using to make our mesh dissolve. Now press and hold V and click. So we get this vector three and we can call this base color. And now connect this to the base. And we can change this value to like one. So it is visible. And now with its base color, we can change the color to whatever we like. So I will just set it to a darker color like this. Now we need to dissolve this. For that, we need a texture. So in order to get the texture, we can just type in 2D texture sample parameter. So here select this texture sample parameter 2D. And we can call this dissolve texture. Now the default texture here isn't really that useful. So we need to get a different texture. So for that we can go to the third person map. Now select engine. If you don't really see this, you can go to select and show engine contents and plugins etc. And here select that and type in blur noise. So here you can see this lowest blurred noise. It is really a perfect texture for dissolving. It's a really small texture, but it is also really blurred. So it is really smooth. So we can subtract values from this easily without a very harsh cutoff. So in order to use this texture in the material, just select that and go to the material, then right click, then click on use current texture. So we get that. Now here we can subtract a value from this and we can make this disappear or not. So if I reduce this value, you can see that I can eat away at this material by subtracting values from it. So if I just take a look, you can see that some areas are brighter than the other. So if it is darker, that means the value there is smaller. So if I subtract a bigger value from that low value area, it will go to zero 
or below that and the opacity cutoff is like 0.3 so if it is below 0.3 it will turn invisible so this is the basic principle we are going to be using now we need to get a scalar parameter so press and hold s and click so we get this scalar parameter now we can call this alpha and now we need to control the dissolve with this alpha value but here you can see that if i set this to one it will be zero and if i set this to zero it will be fully visible so if i connect this to the alpha i can increase the alpha and you can see that it is eating away at it like that so this is what we want but here one problem you might have is that if i select a different texture like if i select this water texture and bring that in see this value is zero now if i just connect r here you can see that some portions are visible and some portions are not visible because in this water texture some areas already below 0.3 so those areas will be always invisible so in order to prevent that we need to set this value to like minus one or something like that to make this invisible and then we need to change the alpha from minus one to one etc so it isn't really that good we need to change this from zero to one so in order to do that i will just set this to one and get your multiply so if i multiply one with two it will be two and if it is zero it will be zero now we can subtract this and subtract this from here so now if i just connect this to the opacity mask you can see that at zero everything is visible and at 0.5 some of it is visible and at one everything is invisible so we can normalize that negative one to one using this math here so here this value is actually from zero to two because we are multiplying this by two and when we subtract that by one at zero we will get negative one and at two we will get one and then we will do our normal operation that i showed earlier so with this we can control the fading now i will just connect the red channel to the subtract again and delete this one and now we need to add the edge colors so in order to do that we can get your multiply and we can get another vector parameter by pressing and holding v and clicking and now we can call this edge color and give it a red color and change the value to like 5 so it is a little bit brighter connect this here and connect this to the mc color so now you can see that everything is mc this is not what we want so first i will change the value to like 0.4 for the alpha or 0.7 so some of it is invisible maybe like 0.5 or 0.55 so like this now you can see that everything is red we don't really want that so if i connect this to the multiply still everything is red so so if i just one minus this this is just like flipping values so if i just connect this to the b it still doesn't work but now we can get a power node and connect this to the b and if i increase the power to like 20 or like 5 here you can see that the edges are a bit visible now get a multiply and connect this here and get a scalar parameter and we can call this boost and i will set this to like 100 or something like that it is really bright now so now get another scalar parameter we can call this power and now connect this to the exponent and change this value to like 20 so here you can see that the edges are a bit brighter so if you increase the boost you can bring the color up like this and if you increase this value you can shorten the size like that you can also saturate this value so if you don't really want this to go above one basically we just want this value here to be close to maximum as possible after powering it that's why we are multiplying it like this so you can leave it like this if you want if you have any brightness issues you can use a saturate maybe that will fix it and i'll just set this back to like 20 so now if i increase the alpha like this and at zero we get something like this so here i am just going to change the color to like black so everything will be a bit more visible so now if i increase the alpha you can see how the dissolve is happening now let's say we need to give a texture around the edges so we can bring some textures in i will bring this tech hex tile and also this 
smoke texture i will just bring that in like this if i just multiply this with the green channel here because in the green channel you can see that there is this hexagon texture so if i just multiply this here we get some effect like this and here i can get a texture coordinate by pressing and holding u and clicking and i can get a multiply and if i set this to like 10 i will get a texture like this so now we will get an effect like this but this is not what we want so if you look here you can see that the edges are really bright and the color is in the darker areas not like this here the edges aren't really visible you can only see the hexagon texture because we are multiplying it so a better way to give this texture to the edges is to get a multiply add so get a multiply add node and just connect this to the add and connect this to the hemisphere so now we get the effect we want and i can change this to like 12 or something like that now i can reduce the boost value so and increase the power so all of this will affect the color so this looks better now we can also give some distortions to our texture so we can bring in the water normal and here i can set the map to relative and change the value to like 3 so it will be a little bit more blurred and now we can get a panel a uv coordinate and a multiply set this to like 5 connect this to the panel so to get a panel you can press and hold p and click like this and connect this to the uv and set this value to like 3 and now here we can get an add and we can add the normal map to the texture coordinate so we can get a distortion but if i connect this like this we will get an error because this is a two vector it only has r and g but this has three vector r g and b so we can get a component mask and mask out the b so tick r and g and now we can get a multiply and connect this to the add here so now we have this distortion like this i can set this value to like 0.2 Maybe that's a bit too fast. I will set the panel value to like 0.1 and I will change the multiply here to 0.1 also. So we can get this effect. I can also change this value to like 8. So now this looks good. So now this looks good. Here you can also convert this to a parameter and we can call this noise pattern. Now we can just save and right click and create a material instance and if i open this up i get this material now here i can change the edge color to whatever i want and i can also change both these textures so in the starter content there are a lot of textures so we can experiment with some of them i will just use perlin texture first i will just add it here so we can get something like that and if i change the alpha can see that i can dissolve it like this and if i use this texture we will get an effect like this we can also set this texture to two-sided so we can also see the inside of the texture so now you can see the inside and here i'll just set this to this color like this and here this texture pattern i can change this to this fire texture so it's barely visible but you can see it here or I can change it to the water texture something like this and now we can also change the power and boost it or reduce the power so you can control a lot of stuff with this so that's it for the material we will come back to it later now we will create the niagara effect so right click then niagara system click next then click empty then click add and finish I will type in ns dissolve main then open it up go to properties set this to gpu compute so we can spawn a lot of particles and we can also use some gpu specific modules change the calculate bound modes to fixed because we need a fixed bounds for gpu compute otherwise when we look away from the bounds it will disappear here the bounds are like 100 we need a bigger one it's up to you what value works for you 
but for the tutorial i'm just going to set this all to like thousand so it won't really disappear when you look away but you can obviously test this out and whichever minimum value works for you you can set it to that and now we can go to update and type in spawn and select spawn right and here we can basically spawn a lot of particles because we are going to kill a lot of them we are only going to keep alive the ones that are on the edges now go to the particle spawn and for the niagara system i'm going to create one that works for both skeletal mesh and also static mesh so go to particle spawn and type in skeletal mesh location and now select many and now go to mesh sampling and set this to triangles and here i will go to size and set this to uniform maybe set this to like rounding uniform and one and four so now you can see the shape of the mesh if you don't really see this you can click a fix here or you can go into the mesh and type in cpu access and check whether this is clicked if i untick this and if i combine here we will get an error saying that we need to fix this so just click that so this is to sample a skeletal mesh so i will just untick this and here i will type in static mesh so we get this static mesh location and i can get a sphere so i will get this material sphere and you can also click fix now here so you can get this sphere and now if i go back to the world and here i will type sphere you can get a sphere and here if i just add a niagara particle system to this you can see that it is spawning on the sphere so if i just select this and go to the sphere and try to add this and click fix now so now that sphere is added like that you can see it is spawning all over the sphere so here i will just open this material instance and just set this to default value and i can change the alpha like this so i will set the alpha to like 0.5 or like 0.6 that's a good value now we can add that to the spheres material like this so here you can see that it is really bright so here i will just set this value to like thousand or something like that and here the color is very bright so go to the niagara system and set this to direct set and maybe reduce that value so here you can see a lot of particles spawned but we only want this particle to spawn on the edges so in order to do that we need to create a scratch module so we can go to the particle spawn and click add and type in scratch new scratch module and we can go to local module and rename this dissolve module so in order to dissolve this we need a texture so click add and type in texture and texture sample so we need to bring our noise texture so if i go to the material instance we can see that we call this dissolve texture we can name this whatever we want this doesn't have any connection but just so that we remember we will also call this dissolve texture so now we need to sample this texture so drag and type in sample 2d texture so here we need a uv coordinate we can just connect this to here so we get this uv and now we need a float value this is going to be our alpha and since this is a texture value and here if i just select this you can see that it says that it is a vector 4 we don't really need a vector 4 we just need the red channel so drag and type in break now click for vector so we can break that and here you can see that x y c w value and if i go to the material you can see r g b a these are the same values so here we need the r value because this is a grayscale image so all this r g and b value are the same so we can pick anything here i will just pick the x channel and i will get a subtract and here we will do the same thing we have done here this alpha multiply subtract so it is the same idea so i'm just going to get another subtract and here i will get a multiply and i will connect this to the alpha here and i will click this and change this to float and here i will select this and change this to float also here i will change the value to like one and here i will change the value to like two the same thing we have done here so now we get the same effect as our material but there is an issue here 
So if you look at this, you can see that we have an edge, but we actually don't have an edge because if I just disconnect this and get a one value and connect this to the opacity mask, you can see that the entire portion is bright. We don't really want that for our Niagara system because we only want the particle to spawn at the edges and not all around it. So in order to isolate just the edges, we can do a float comparison operation. So in order to do that, we can just saturate this value so that the values don't go above one or below zero. If you change the alpha in different ways, so it will just make it safer. Now we can get a greater than and a lesser than. And here we can change this to float. And here we can also change this to float. We can change the greater than value to like 0.1 and the less than value to like 0.25. So we are targeting values that are between 0.1 and 0.25. So if both of these are true, we can add this. So logical and, which means that this will be true if A and B are true. And this will be false if either of them are false or both of them are false. And if both of them are true, we need to type alive here. So data instance alive. This will kill the particle if this is false and it will keep the particles alive if it is true. So connect this here. So it is important not to connect this to the particle update. We don't really want to update it all the time. We just want to update it once when the particle spawns. So keep it in the particle spawn position like this here, not in the update. Here, if I select this, you can see a slot for texture. So this texture here, you can see a slot will be the same one we used. So this one, so I'm just going to plug that in. And for the UV, you can type in sample. And here you can see the static mesh sample UV. You can drag that in. And here you can see that there is no particles right now. And if I go to the instance, you can see the value is 0.6. So here, if I change the alpha value to like 0.6, now here you can see that the particle has spawned. So now we need to adjust the edge values. So here, we can go into the module and we can drag and connect this here and we can call this inner edge and also drag this and connect this here and call this outer edge now don't forget to apply and here we can give a value of point four for inner and point three for outer okay so for the inner we can give a value of point three and for outer we can give a value of point four so now you can see that our materials are spawning at the edges so I can give a really bright color also. So I will give a red color like this. That's too bright. So I will just bring that down a bit. So here you can see that the particles are spawning on the dissolved edges like this. So here we can also add some velocity. So it will go up like that or slowly like this. We can also add some curl noise force like that so i'm just going to disable that we need to do a lot more now this is the basic effect now we will create more complex effects so i will go to the dissolve and i will just duplicate this and i will untick this and here i will change this to like fire and i will bring this down so here we can add some fire so to do that we can go to the content browser and we can go to the particle and here we have this fire texture this fire UV, we can bring that to the sprite renderer here and set this to like six by six. Since this is a six by six texture here, this one, it is six by six. Here you can see that. So now we have a fire sub UV. We can go to update and type in sub UV animation. And here you can select this and change this to sprite renderer. So now this will animate. And we can add a small velocity here. So now you can see a fire. So here we can make this value really bright and a bit yellowish like this. Now go to particle and change the lifetime to random and set this to 0.5 and 1 and set the size to 30 
and 50 and we can reduce the particle spawn rate to like 1000 maybe like 10 and 20 now here you can see the fire we can increase the spawn rate to like 10,000 that's a lot of particles so so maybe like 5,000 so now you can see that the particles are staying at the edges and if I just change the alpha to like 0.8 and here if I go to the dissolve and change this to like 0.8 it's not really visible so let's set this value to like 0.4 or 0.55 and here we can also set this value to like 0.55 now we need to control these values using a blueprint so for that i will create a blueprint so right click and blueprint actor bp dissolve actor then open it up and here we can add a static mesh and also a skeletal mesh so with the static mesh we can just add the same sphere we used so just add that and for this we can add a niagara component to it and this Niagara component will be the one we created like this and for the material we can add this material so we get this effect so we can go to the construction script here and here we can drag the static mesh and here we can type in set scalar parameter value on materials so it will set this on all materials if you have like different elemental slots this will set it on all the on all of them if it has the parameter named alpha so type in alpha and connect this here and drag this and promote a variable and we can call this alpha and click on this i so it is exposed so if i compile and go back into the world and if i bring in the dissolve here i can increase the alpha like this you can see that it is dissolving but this doesn't have much of an effect on the niagara system and also these values are really high so we can set that in the blueprint so here we can drag in the static mesh again and type in set vector parameter values on materials and here the parameter we are looking for is called edge color so just copy that and paste it and here we can create a new variable and we can call this edge color and we can set the variable type to linear color and we can also expose this and now drag that in like this and here i can increase the alpha so since this is black nothing will happen so i will set this to orange but still nothing will be visible because the alpha is zero so set that to one also so now it's a bit visible if I increase its value like 20 or something like that it's more visible now 200 see so I will set this value to like 20 but we need to increase the brightness separately so in order to do that we can go to the blueprint and here we can get a multiply and we can change this to a float and drag and type in and promote your variable and we can call this color boost now connect this here and click combine and also click the eye now we can increase the color like this and change the color like this also it's really bright but you get the idea now we need to control the parameters in the niagara system also so in order to do that go to the niagara system and here you can go to user parameters and here you can see the alpha the texture the color etc so in order to control this we can go to the user parameters and click this and type in float and we can call this alpha and just drag that into the alpha here and we can go to the initialize particle and you can see the color we can click this and type in color and call this linear color i will name this edge color and drag that in so if i go here and set this to like 20 and set the alpha to like 5 you can see it is visible so here i will set the alpha to 0 and this to like 5 or something like that and now we can go back to our blueprint and drag the niagara system 
and here we can drag and type in set parameter float so this one should be the alpha here and this is the alpha so name this alpha now drag the Niagara system again and type in set linear color this one is the edge color now we can just drag this in and click compile so now if I just select this and change the alpha you can see that it is moving with the material I will set the edge color to like 5 or something like that now we need a way to set the texture so in order to do that we can go to the Niagara again and here we have this texture so click this and type in texture sample we can call this dissolve texture and the default value should be the blurred one so we can add that and now we can just drag that in like this you can also create a variable for the inner and outer edges if you want and you can control that so if I just select the Niagara system you get all the controls here also like that if you expose that in the blueprint you can control both of them together so here we need to change the texture also so in order to do that we can just go to the texture main and here we can get the name we can just copy that and now in order to change the texture we cannot just drag and type in set texture parameter that doesn't really work and one more thing to keep in mind that some measures like the mannequin has like two material slots some has three this one only has one but we need to account for the fact that some measures are more than one so we need to set on all of them so in order to do that we can drag from the static mesh and type in get materials we need to get all the materials and we need to do a for loop so we can cycle through all the element indexes this one only has one but some has two three etc so we need to cycle through all of them and then we need to drag in the static mesh and type in create dynamic material instance and connect this here and connect the any element to the source material and index here and here now if I drag from this and type in set texture and texture parameter value so here I can just paste our dissolved texture name and this one I can promote to a variable and I can type in texture and click on the I again so we can add a texture and now for the Niagara we can drag and type in set texture object and the texture object for the override we need to get the name we gave so just copy that name and for the texture we can just drag in the texture so now if I just select this and for the texture I will select maybe this Perlin texture so now you can see what has happened this smoke texture gave an effect like this or this texture which kind of gives an effect like this so here I will go to the instance and I will reduce the boost and change the power to like 12 so here you can see that the fire is only at the edges I can change the texture like this and you can see the fire is at the edges and I can just increase it so here if I just increase this value like this you can see that it is really bright and if I set this to 1 you can see that it has disappeared and if I increase the boost color like 20 or something that, like that so here I can change the alpha like this so with this setup you can change the texture and alpha everything like this and change the color to whatever you like one thing you can do is that you can get a multiply connect this here and connect this to the MC color and from the alpha you can 1 minus this so when we increase the alpha the value of the MC also decreases which gives a cool effect so if I increase the alpha here you can see that at 1 it is fully gone and at 0 it's there so
and you can change the color also like this so that's it for the static mesh now we will work on the skeletal mesh dissolve effect now for the mannequin we can use the same blueprint but here we can select the skeletal mesh and here for the skeletal mesh we can type in mani so sk mani and here i will just set the visibility of the spear to invisible and for the niagara system we'll just copy that and paste it to the skeletal mesh and i will call this sk niagara system and now here i will just connect this static mesh here to the target here and i will just delete this i will connect this to the niagara here delete that this here to the niagara and also this static mesh i will also connect that there and this here so we have both of them connected like this and now i will just double click here to get this rear out node double click here to get this rear out node just connect this here so here press ctrl and drag and connect it like this and connect this here and connect this here then we can select all of this just keep these two out and collapse to a macro and now click compile now go back in so the first input is the niagara system so i will call this ns system and the second input is the mesh so now we can rename this macro i will call this static mesh setup macro now we can duplicate this and we can create a skeletal mesh setup macro and here just disconnect this and click compile and here for the mesh type in skeletal mesh so skeletal mesh and object reference and then we can just connect so here i made an error here we can need to set this to skeletal mesh component skeletal mesh component object reference so set it to that and now connect this here so this is a bit messy so i will just rearrange it like this you can also create a rear out node and arrange it like this i didn't change this to a function because i need to have a loop and i don't know if loops work in a function so i'm using a macro if it was a function we will also get a local variable and we don't really have to do all of this so here i will just parent this sk system to the skeletal mesh like this and we can go to the construction script i will just disconnect this i will drag in the skeletal mesh one and i will get the skeletal mesh niagara and also the skeletal mesh now here i will disable the niagara system of the static mesh we don't really want that so here you can see that the sphere is rendering like this this is because in the niagara system we are sampling a static mesh so now we can sample a skeletal mesh so i will just untick this and i will just duplicate this empty so here in the empty i will call this skeletal mesh base and here if i tick this and untick the static mesh we will get an error because we don't really have this anymore and nothing will show up so for the static mesh location sample uv we can go back to the parameter and type in sample and we can get the skeletal mesh sample uv so we can just drag that in so now it is visible on the skeletal mesh and if i go here and if i set this to like zero you can see the skeletal mesh and if i set this to like one you can see that the material is different so i can select this material and go back to the skeletal mesh and add both of them here like this and here if i set this to zero and set this to like one this is what we are getting and this is because if we go back to the skeletal mesh base we haven't added our parameter so we can just drag in our alpha and we can drag in the edge color and here we can drag in our dissolved texture also and click now you can see that it has disappeared 
So if I set this to like 0.5, you can see the material. Now, if I just get the blur texture again, lorus, and add that. And if I increase alpha, here you can see that the particles are spawning at the edges like that. It's a bit too big, so we can go back and fix it. So go back to the initialize particle, and this is one and two, and we will set the lifetime to one also. So now you can see them at the edges, say like this. Here we can also increase the amount to like 30,000 just to test this out. So now you can see they are spawning at the edges. So I will set this back to like 5000. So here if I just select this and set this to like a black color, you can see that it isn't really visible. That is because this sprite renderer using an additive material which will be only visible if the value is above zero. So if you want a black color also like in this effect, we need to create a new particle material for that. So for that right click and click material M and I will call this dot main then open this up then set the shading model to unlit and set the blend mode to masked we don't really want translucent because we are going to reduce the size of the particle and fade them out instead of fading them out using opacity and here we can just get a radial gradient and get a particle color we can just multiply the alpha with the exponent and here now we can get a multiply and connect the rgb with this radius with this radial gradient and connect this to the mc color and now connect this to the opacity and now click apply now this material we can add this here now you can see our black color also now here i will select this and now i want this particle to fall down so in order to do that i can go to the niagara system and i can go to gravity and add a gravity force and it will just fall down like this now here i also want some collision i can go to update and type in collision and select distance field because the depth buffer only works with the translucent now we have some collisions like this now we can add some curl noise to this and set the noise strength to like 1000 so now we have something that is falling like this now we can just duplicate this copy paste and i will rename this to skeletal mesh black and this i will change the color to like black and i will increase the price size to 3 and 5 and reduce the spawn rate to like 2000 and here i will go to the update and type in scale sprite size and this one i want to invert so here it will go from 0 to 1 but i will just right click here and add a key and set this value to like 1 and i will set this value to like 0 so it will go from 0 to 1 and then 1 to 0 and now we can select all of this and make this smoother with auto curve and now we can copy and paste it here also so now we get an effect like this and for the mesh we can go to the blueprint and here we can go to animation mode and set this to asset and type in idle so we have our idle animation and if i press play you can see that we have our idle animations i'll change the color to orange like this and maybe i will increase the value to like 40 or something like that and here i can set the texture to this smoke texture so now if i just select this and change the alpha it will dissolve like this now if i go to the main and if i go to the event graph i can type in custom and i can call this update data and here i will have this skeletal mesh macro i can connect this here and i can connect the mesh and the niagara system 
and when we start the game we can update this maybe call this update data skeletal mesh so sk and if i open this up i can connect the completed to here and when we complete this we can run a timeline to animate the alpha value so timeline add a timeline and play from start and here open this up and add a track float track and zero at time and now shift click and for the time set this to five here like this and one here so we get this nice curve now if i go back in here we can get the alpha one and the alpha one for the niagara we can copy both of them and paste it here and connect this to the update and connect this here also we can bring in the skeletal mesh and the niagara and now connect this to the parameter so when the timeline animates we get the effect of dissolving so if i press play you can see that it is dissolving so now we need to add the smoke and the vortex so for that we can go back to the particle materials and just duplicate this and set this to translucent if it is additive and set the shading model to unlit and just connect this to the mc color and click apply you can also try modulate if you want if you just want the dark color and now go back to the material duplicate this here we don't really need the gravity or the collision and for the sprite renderer we can get the smoke we created and the uv is 8 by 8 because this is 8 by 8 and here we can go to sub uv animation and get that set that to sprite renderer and now set the size to like 200 and 400 and set the spawn rate to like 200 and now if i press play that is a load of particles so here what we need to do is that we need to go to the sprite scale and delete this one and set this to like one and change the curve like this and here we also need to scale the color so scale color and for the alpha get a curve and add a new key and auto curve all of them like that and now select all of these and auto curve them and i will bring this down like this so now if i press play it is still too big and we need to set the size to like 60 and 90 so now press play that is too small here we need to turn on the gravity force which i forgot now we also need to disable the curl noise we don't really want that so now we can set the value to like 200 and 300 now if i press play okay now we can see the effect maybe we can make it a bit bigger like this now there is smoke falling down now we can create the blowing particles like this so that's very easy so we can go to the dissolve again we can just add an emitter blowing particles and here go to initialize and drag in our edge color and we need to copy our dissolve module so copy and paste that and we also need to copy the skeletal mesh so paste that and bring that above the dissolve mesh now click compile now here we might have an issue if the collision is a scene depth we need to change that to distance field because we don't really want this we don't really want to use the default sprite we just want to use the one we created this one so add that so now go to scale sprite size and this is fine now if i press play here not enough uh, particles are spawning so go to spawn rate and change this to like 5000 or something like that maybe that's a bit too much but i think that's a bit too much okay 5000 is a bit too much i will set this to like 1000 
and I will duplicate this and now I will set this color to like black so if I press play now we have that effect now we need to create the vortex to create that go to the Niagara system again and just copy paste the skeletal mesh base now rename this to vortex here we don't really need the gravity or the curl force and we need to tick the add velocity and select that and turn the c value to like 200 so if i press play you can see that the particles are moving upwards now here we need to select the sprite renderer and change the alignment to velocity aligned so we can stretch this in non-uniform directions now go to update and type in size by speed so scale sprite size by speed and set this max value to like 1 and 2 and here we will set this to like 10 and 20 maybe 15 and if I press play you can see that it's a bit too big so we can reduce the spawn count to like I don't know like 2000 or something like that now we need to add vortex velocity and for the vortex velocity value I will type in 1700 and I will also add some data and change the value to like 1 now if I press play maybe we need to add more vortex velocity so I will change this to 17,000 maybe that's enough maybe we can increase the axis scale also so change the vector c value to like 5 so now we have a vortex we can set that to like 10 and then the vortex will be bigger maybe that's a bit too much i will set this to like 7 and i will just duplicate this and paste this and here i will set this color to like black and maybe spawn rate to like 3000 or like 1000 so now now we have the effect so here if i just press play we have the effect and here you can see that this is working on the mannequin material but here we only have this material so in order to add this to the mannequin material we can just select all of this and call off this to a node and here we can type in mc and this one opacity and all of this is inside this and we can just copy this i know if i just select this and select them mesh and open this like this again you can see that if i just paste this i can connect it like this it already has an mc so you can just add that and here the opacity mask you can connect that directly and it should work on this one also like this and so i think that's it for the tutorial guys thank you very much for watching and if you want to download the entire project file you can support me on my patreon thank you